What's going on, guys? This is Eddie, a.k.a. Mr. Eddie Nunez. Thank you again for tuning in to another one of my videos. And today we are, of course, talking about the Mini 3 Pro. I received the DJI Mini 3 Pro back from DJI. They actually sent me a replacement, as you may or may know. You know, I took some time off of YouTube specifically and specifically recording some content around this drone because the first one I had a gimbal issue where there was just tons of jello and vibration and most of the footage was unusable. Well, I sent it into DJI and they did the right thing and they replaced the drone completely with a new one. So thank you, DJI. And today we're gonna be talking about some filters and why filters are important. So also a huge shout out to Freewell for sending me um, this three different packs here that we can leverage on the Mini 3 Pro. But now let's get back to why filters are important on the on drones specifically or any camera equipment that you may have. So when you look at this um, little mini here, um, this little guy has a camera with an aperture of uh, 1.7. So that aperture is fixed, which means it lets in tremendous amount of lighting. Um, now on a day like today where it's uh, completely sunny and bright, having all that light for let's say videos, it's not good because you're going to see some um, incredible sharp video and sometimes stuttery video because the shutter speed is cranked way too high. Now, our eyes are normally used to seeing things at 24 frames per second, even 30 frames per second, but we're also accustomed to seeing motion blur. And you cannot get motion blur unless you follow the 180 um, degree rule. And that 180 degree rule states that if you are shooting at 30 frames per second, then you must keep your drone or your camera at a shutter of one over 60. Now, if you were to try keeping the shutter on a day like today without a filter on, at, at 1 over 60, your image is going to be entirely blown out. You won't be able to see a thing. It will be completely white. And I'll demonstrate here a sample of what that looks like. Um, but the good thing is that, you know, some uh, companies such as Freewell create filters that are essentially like sunglasses for your camera lens and really block some of that light so you can shoot at the appropriate frame rates. And this is very beneficial when you wanna get cinematic videos and you wanna have that motion blur. Additionally, um, you know, Freewell creates polarized filters, which is going to be a lifesaver when you have those reflections, such as here in the environment, in the environment that I am today, Behind me, we have water um, with the sun beaming down on the water. Sometimes you get some of that very harsh lighting bouncing back at your drone. And when you have a polarizing filter, you can also correct some of those reflections so that it is easy and cinematic um, to your camera or to your lens. So we're going to go ahead today and try these um, Freewell filters, I will go ahead and probably use a ND32. We'll probably maybe have to use an ND64 based on the strong lighting conditions that we have here. We also have a UV filter, which is really great um, to place on your drone when you don't need a filter overall. And then you have the standard day pack, which is, you know, just your normal set of filters, an ND4, ND8, 16, 32, 64, 1000 is included in this pack. But these filters are great when you're not really dealing with reflections and you don't need a polarizer. Um, but also, like when I think about ND1000, this filter is phenomenal for some long exposure photography. That's when you really want to slow down motion and you want to have a long exposure. So thinking about maybe a waterfall, maybe by the coastline or along the beach, and you want to get the waves and you want to slow and freeze um, that, that, that motion of the water and kind of create like that milky effect, that's when you will use a strong filter such as an ND1000. So today we're going to go ahead, like I said, we're going to get some cinematic shots. I want to show you the difference of the Mini 3 Pro without a filter and also the Mini 3 Pro with the filter. And let me know in the comments below if you see a difference. Do you see more of that cinematic blur, that cinematic feel to the video, or does it look you know, normal? I can almost guarantee you that you're gonna absolutely tell the difference when I have a filter and when I don't have a filter, just based on the motion blur. And then when the shutter is cranked way up high, you're gonna see some of that jitterness and everything is gonna be just you know, too sharp. 
um, not in a not in a good way so a lot of sharpness is not always good so let's put this little bird up in the air let's install a filter I'm gonna start with an ND32 and might progress over to an ND64 depending on what it looks like based on first impressions and then we'll come back and uh, kind of do an overall conclusion of these um, filters example that I just showed you I was using the ND32 and I was still slightly overexposed that's one of the hassles of using filters I have to say is that when you don't have the appropriate filter or the lighting environment is changing and depending on where you're filming you have to go ahead and land your drone or in this case if it's a camera go back to your camera and change the filter now the good thing is that there's various drone companies such as Freewell that make filters that are variable which means that all you have to do is just rotate the filter and increase the intensity um, and, uh, and to stop more light from coming into your drone. In, in the case of a drone, you still have to kind of land your drone to make those adjustments similar to like if you have to switch from an ND32 to an ND64. Um, but that's not really much of a hassle. Once you got your lighting conditions all set and as long as your lighting is not changing much, you can go ahead and make some slight adjustments on your drone, such as increasing your ISO or increasing your shutter to kind of compensate for that additional light or that limited light. You don't want to do too much adjustments because then again, you're going to affect your cinematic 180 degree rule, but you want to make maybe just a slight um, adjustment to the drone that way you have the perfect lighting conditions now finally the nd1000 in the all day pack is really really useful as i mentioned earlier for um long exposure photography unfortunately i don't have um a lot of waves happening here behind me but i will come back in a future video and showcase um the power of nd1000 specifically for photography to kind of get that milky um, effect when it comes to water so like a waterfall a beach with um, significant waves is some of the best case scenario that I can think of using an ND1000 and it comes in really handy um, 
I hope that you enjoyed the video today. Let me know what questions you have in the comments below. If you have a Mini 3 Pro, I strongly suggest that you pick up a, a pack of filters. The Freewell packs are a phenomenal quality and also at a very affordable price. I'll leave links in the description below that you can leverage if you want to take a look and see these and get and pick some up for yourself. Um, I'll be happy to help you with filters. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, until next time, peace. Happy I got my Mini 3 Pro. You'll see a lot more content coming soon. Thank you for watching. Until next time.